Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do a fun little exercise in composition, specifically in street photography. We'll take a look at some of my favorite photos and all the different compositional elements that make them successful. Hopefully you guys can take some of those tips and implement them into your own work. Let's get to it. So what makes for a solid composition? You always want to start with the rule of thirds. In all seriousness, there are so many different compositional elements that come into play when creating a solid photographic composition. Some of these elements are Let's talk about lines and direction. Once you spend a bit more time exploring the scene, you realize the disconnection created by the lack of eye contact from our main subject. This right here, in my opinion, is the first direction the viewer is asked to move in. Subject's left. Right there to the very right, we see a street sign with an engaging character looking, quote unquote, right into the camera. Hi Brandon. From that point on, we continue to move in a circular direction towards the top of the frame and across to the other side with the help of some friendly pedestrians. A specific one worth mentioning is the guy in the suit looking right at the person sitting on the stairs wearing the blue jumpsuit. From there, we're back at our main subject. This composition challenges the idea of who the main subject in this photo is. Is it the person in the center of the frame? Or is it, in fact, our good friend Brandon? Now you might ask yourself, how am I supposed to figure out the best composition, or the right composition, photographing fleeting moments on the street? Now that's definitely not an easy task, but the answer to that is practice. Practice, 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 and when you finish practicing, keep practicing. Once you're fluent with your camera settings and your preferences of how to shoot street photography, you can put all that stuff out of the way and focus on your composition. Next up, relationships and color. This is one of my favorite street photos and one that definitely got a lot of exposure over the last few years. I took it while walking around the streets of Tel Aviv during my visit to Israel. The first thing that probably catches your eye is the color palette mainly red and white with a touch of blue and some blacks in the windows of the building. This photograph is a great example of how you can bring together all the different elements that share the same color palette. Of course, in order for this to happen, those components need to be present to begin with, and with enough experience and some luck, you can spot them. In this photograph, the distinctive color palette cannot be ignored. You can find it in the foreground with the red and white cars the paint pattern on the curb, and the sweater worn by the figure in the center of the frame. The placement of the elements, which of course has a lot to do with the camera's point of view, creates a triangle shape and helps emphasize the relationship between all of the red and white bits in the photo. Lastly, if you look really close, you can spot a can of Red Bull sitting on the window ledge right about the figure. If you ever had a drink that gives you wings, you know that the colors on the label are red, white, and blue just like the sweater the figure in the frame is wearing. Don't get too caught up in traditional rules of composition. Remember, you have to know what makes for good composition, but then once you know some of those basics, you can always break those rules and change it up. Next up, repetition, patterns, and shapes. Our last shot of the day is from that same trip to Israel with a slight change in aesthetics. This composition is much more minimal, organized, and symmetrical. In fact, the reason I was drawn to this scene to begin with was all the geometrical shapes. I definitely tried a bunch of angles here and eventually ended up going low, extending the lines on the boardwalk and using them as a way to lead my viewer's eyes to the people sitting behind the rock formations. So we have a pattern in the ground, and since that pattern is made up of multiple vertical lines, we can use that to direct the viewer through the frame. In addition, we have a few more geometrical shapes in the top portion of the frame, the three circular umbrellas. This is where the rule of odds come into play, and if you're not sure what that is, it basically means that, generally speaking, odd-numbered subjects make for more pleasing composition. Again, it works here, but it may not be true in all situations, so definitely another rule for you to break. Now that we've talked about some of the elements that make for great compositions in photography, all you have to do is pick up your camera and go out and shoot. 
Oh, if you're in the Toronto area, you might want to put a coat on. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.